hello everybody welcome to our live i am heather we come to you live monday through thursday 10 30 a.m central time all the time uh so you can learn more about luminats what we have to offer how to use it uh you can ask questions see other products everything we do go over the basics on how to airbrush i give you steps on how to airbrush um or how to get started and so which makes those steps easier and so make sure um if you're new to definitely watch the first part of this because it will give you um some steps on on how how to understand it and how to get started so first let's go over our one of our starter kits this is our icon and we also have the icon pro and the legend and then of course we do have the breeze now depending on when you purchase it you might have a system that has um you know maybe came with free gifts or you have the options to purchase other products with it but it is going to come with two bottles of foundation love and blush now i'm going to use the blush and i'll show you uh how to utilize that uh, but our blush is super high pigmented it does bloom so you're only going to want to use about two drops and then love is a hydrating illuminator which will give your skin some luminosity and so it might not be something you use every single day or you might love it and you use it every day but you can mix it in with your blush you can mix it in with your foundation or use it by itself just in those high cheekbone areas there's a lot of different ways you can utilize that but after you get the kit we want you to let me find this one uh, these are some ways to get started to kind of um help you along and so one thing you need to know off the bat is that it is different than found uh, than traditional makeup so make sure that you are keeping it four finger widths away this is the perfect distance to keep this going to keep this moving da, 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 keep it moving around your face now you don't have to do this and you don't have to paint you know we're not painting a fence so you don't have to go over every inch so look in the mirror watch yourself keep it four finger widths away and just slightly move it around bam 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 and practice that with just the air then you can put this uh put makeup in here or not makeup water in here and practice barely pulling back on that trigger those are steps that are going to be very important that distance is very important um keep the stylus moving very important lightly pulling back on that trigger very important we want you uh to remember all that when airbrushing all right let me see who's on good morning Car is it Kari or carrie cindy and veronica hello christina good to see you all is good hello lumines how are you so Kari has i hope it's Kari. Kari. i'm gonna say Kari. um good morning Kari here help me help me <laughs> help please what is the best way to apply my luminous air makeup on Vela's hair is and it sticks to the hair and uh, more of a droplet derma planning is not an option oh so you have a little bit of um hair on your face and so you're seeing it is that what you're saying Kari um good morning Debbie how are you um <laughs> derma planning is not an option so with that being said i want to share uh and i don't have one here we do have a product called silk and smooth it's a sm silk and smooth shaver so it will get rid of those little you know we all have that peach fuzz sometimes um or i have this one little hair that wants to like i check it every single day and then one day i'll look at it and it's like that long i'm like did i sneeze and it just grew i don't know but anyway um the little hair if it is sticking to those little peach fuzz hairs believe it or not you're pulling back too hard on that trigger anytime it's going to feel wet or sticky uh, or if you can see the droplets on your face you're pulling back too hard guys i cannot stress this enough and the reason i have to stress this enough is because i know a lot of people do this and it it makes sense because you have been doing traditional makeup up until this point okay we're used to seeing that um you know what hold on i'm gonna show you this let's address that right now shall we 
because I know that that is an issue. Um, so I am, I'm just going to address it. Okay. I am going to go in and put some foundation in here. Cause that's, this is what our lives are about. Um, is answering these questions. And I think the best way, because I know, I mean, guys, I've been doing this about 20 plus years. Um, so what you're telling me is nothing new. Uh, it's not my first rodeo. Like I understand it, but you have been doing traditional makeup up until this point. Right. And so this is what you're used to. And I actually have some traditional makeup, right? You're used to that where you're used to seeing the opaqueness and the, um, hold on, I'm reaching, get some, get a wipe. You're used to seeing, cause my hands feel gross now, <laughs> but you're used to seeing that opaqueness when you put it on, right? Cause we're, I guess I don't know how to label on this one, but you put it on your hands and bam, and then you're blending that in. Correct. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you, now we're going to airbrush and you are going to do the opposite of this. And sometimes it takes a little second, a little more practicing to understand that this is not what you want, what you want to see with airbrush makeup. Okay. So I have my breeze. I did put shade three in here um in this the rose foundation when people get the airbrush home they end up putting it on like traditional makeup it make that makes sense to me because that's all you know you figure it's the same way of putting it on but it is different guys it's a not only is it applied different this way but you're spraying in light passes and when i say light passes I mean, so light that you want to question whether or not it's coming, even going on one way to, to, um, check that is because you might say, no, Heather, I am spraying super light and you're probably not because one thing I want you to do is put a few drops of like five drops of makeup in here in your makeup. Well, get a paper towel. Good morning, Amber. Hold it the four finger widths away, start your movement and lightly pull back on this trigger. Now you might not be able, I guess you can see it a little bit, but that is how light I'm pulling back guys. If you see this, that's too much. You're pulling back. So what this will show you is it tells your brain that, oh, something is coming out. I thought I wouldn't even pull back and something's coming out. So that is one great way to check it. Okay. So if I come here and I'm starting my airbrush, okay, so you just saw me and I'm using this side of it. This one has the stuff I just sprayed on it. There is nothing on here. That is how light you're spraying. If you can see it, If it's making pores look bigger and that happens, then you're spraying too hard. Okay. Airbrushing is night and day difference. Okay. I know we want to see this because that's what we're used to. We don't want to, but that's what we're used to. Right. So with airbrush makeup, if you're spraying so hard and trying to cover every inch with, if I hear the, the words droplets, it looked too orange. Um, it enhanced my pores and wrinkles. You're spraying too hard. You're treating it like airbrush makeup. I'm sorry. You're treating it like traditional makeup. And that's not what we want. Okay. Does that make sense? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Muzi. How are you, baby? Micro beads. I like that. I like that. Micro beads. All right. So now I just wiped my face off with the 
the gunk. Let me empty out this because we are going to start. I'm going to start. Now, this is what I call a blowout. If I was, I pushed down all the way on my um, trigger, blow out the makeup that was in there because I'm starting with something different. I am going. So my dad's 80th birthday party was this weekend. We have been preparing for this for like months and months and months. It was Saturday. I was so tired. My eyes were like swollen. So I need some extra moisture in my face. On my face. Is that helpful, Kari? You know, that's one. It's one thing we talk like I touch on every single time I do this, but I, you know, maybe I need to cover that a little bit more because I know that a lot of new people or they, again, you, we think we're spraying light, but it's even lighter than that. If we were all in a room and everybody was airbrushing and I was in the room and I closed my eyes, I could tell you who was spraying too hard and who was out of makeup. So that's another thing with practicing with the water and doing this. That is another way to, um, you, you'll start to hear it. It'll all start making sense. You'll have your oh moment. All right. So now I'm actually going to start with a pre-coverage. So I'm going to start with light beige concealer, turning my system on. I feel the air. I can use the air to kind of dry that spray that I just did. Now, let me back up by saying, guys, what I'm telling you is when you are like perfecto on airbrushing, if you are spraying right now and it, it looks good but still feels a little wet, that's okay. Airbrush makeup is super forgiving. So if you need to take your finger off the trigger and just use that air, to blend or to dry it out a little, that's fine. You'll get there. You'll get there. There are times I've been doing this forever. And there are times like, I'm not even thinking. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, oh, that look, that's wet. Or that's blah, blah, blah. And I can, what, tap it out, tap it out. And then I'll be fine. So just know that you will get there. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to spray the light beige concealer on my lids. Hey, Martha, how are you? How are you? Yay. All right, so now I'm just going over this pre-coverage, right? So I'm just going over the redness, the darkness in my eyes, on my lids, underneath. Thank you for sharing. I love when you guys share because we know there's so many people out there that have a system and they're like not using it because they don't know how. That's why we do these guys. We don't just buy, you don't just buy a system and we're like, okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. We're here for you. You can sign up for a small class. Uh, the link is below. You can sign up for a class and we go over how to airbrush. We do them on Mondays and Wednesdays. They're very small classes. Good morning, Martong. All right, so I have my, my CC concealer. I started my coverage. And now I'm actually going to go in and powder. I'm good. So I have my compact powder, and I'm just lightly dusting my face. Now, if you've watched these a while, you know that we sometimes do that because it does give you more of a polished look, more of a flawless look. Um, if you get shiny throughout the day, um, maybe in your T-zone, that's going to help control that shine. So try it one time doing it this way and see how you like it. It does not have to be a lot of powder. It's just you saw me boop, boop, a little bit and that was it. All right, now I'm going to go in with my matte bronzer. This is, I need to pop that. Do the matte bronzer here. Some of the tips I need to clean out because if you don't use a product for a while, the their makeup will get stuck in here sometimes. Like if you don't, use, you know, if there's something you don't use every single day, know that I'm taking a wipe. 
wiggle it back and forth. You can take the cap off, soak these in warm water, get a Tupperware bowl or something or what a coffee cup, whatever. Warm water, boop, right in there and soak that. And then you can pop this back in and listen for that pop and they'll work. So, uh, no, where'd you send it? All right. So now I have my bronzer in here and this is another way to show you. Hold on. I'm going to show you the color that I'm, this is my, our matte bronzer. That is the color I'm using. So if I was spraying too hard, you would see that ooh, immediately, right? But watch how I go back and forth. You start seeing it come up, but I'm going to go over here. The other day I used this for eyeshadow. You can see where my dog scratched me, AKA the horse, my 60 pound puppy. And then I have this little friend that popped down here, but I'm still doing contouring. And I just keep going back to those spots that I'm contouring till I get the coverage that I want. Cindy said, Friday, I did my airbrush at 8 a.m. and went to a tailgate at 1 p.m. By the time I got home from the game, it was midnight and my makeup still looked good after all the those hours. I love hearing that. And that's so true, guys. That is so true. I mean, there are times when I'm doing makeup for a wedding for somebody's makeup and, and usually, you know, now that we're getting back in the swing of things, like I'm booked up on weekends. And so it, it makes a big difference. I've done what I've done. I've done bridal makeup at six in the morning for a wedding that was at 5 PM. Cause that's the only time slot I had available or left, you know, that I had left. And so it lasts guys, it lasts. And if you want that added protection, get our final seal. That's also a great one. Cindy, did you use the final seal or did you just do the, um, the makeup? I'm now using soft rose blush, two drops. And then I just want a little bit of pink on my cheeks. Martin, I'll check. I haven't checked this morning. I might put a little bit on my eyes. And this is my blush. Two drops. And that's it. You'll start seeing that blush bloom. If you're doing blush after foundation, yes, I'm doing all this before my foundation. But if you're doing it after, you want to get the blush to like where you want it right where it's perfect and then stop because it will boom it is going to come up a little bit all right so now i'm going to get my foundation and i think i'm going to put a little bit of two because i've i haven't done my um my uh, tanning tonic and so i feel a little lighter so i'm gonna mix some two in there i'm gonna turn this on mix those together pop 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 and then oh you did use okay redo my lip jelly a couple of times due to the heat yeah and i'm sure you're eating and drinking during all that time too so of course yeah the final seal i did it one time i moved like what two three years ago in august i think and i did a full face of makeup and gave y'all like the rundown of uh, my move and it stayed on. Hi, Roxy. I had somebody poke their head in here. You want to come say hi? No? Okay. People, when they hear me, because I'm in this room all by myself talking to myself, <laughs> when it seems like they'll stop in and go like, are you okay? 
or it's probably the opposite. If they don't hear me talking, they're like, are you okay? All right. So I'm going to go keep going, keep going. Now notice how everything's starting to blend. It's starting to soften, right? But I never stop moving. Keep my hand moving. You're never in one spot twice, but there is overlap. Okay. Now, because I did my, my blush and my bronzer and the uh, light beige concealer, I don't have to use as much foundation because I already got a lot of my coverage. Okay. So now I'm going to go in with my nude and naughty, my nude and oops, my nude and naughty palette. And I'm going to take my blending brush. Let's see. What do we want to do today? I don't know. Let's. Do we want some drama on this Monday? Mondays, I like to go for kind of the a bait, not a basic, but like a, a good business neutral. So have y'all been doing something different with your makeup before taking it off, like in the evenings, before taking it off, doing something fun? Maybe contouring, maybe a pop of color on the lips, maybe some eyeliner. And I'm just blending and I'm blending and I'm blending. And then I can take, this is just a neutral, almost my skin color that I'm just popping right. It just pops it up a little bit more. Yes, Martin, that's the right one. I just haven't checked it this morning. I'm going to blend this a little bit more so I don't have any harsh edges. And then I'm going to do, I'm stretching. Let's do the navy. This is the uh, nautical persuasion eyeliner. which I like doing these. I like the persuasion eyeliners because they're, they're deep, they're deep colors. Uh, temptation, our temptation eyeliners has, they have some brighter ones. That champagne color is beautiful. We also have an aquamarine that I love. All of them have great uh, staying power, just like the makeup. get right in there. See how beautiful that is. And it just, just gives it a little bit of a change, a little bit of a, if we want a little more oof, um, which is, you know, it's my favorite word. Um, you can do that as well. So there you go. Probably need to cover that a little bit more or I'm not going to worry about it. There you go. All right. So now let me go in and I'm going to curl. I don't think, I think I missed my eyelashes on this one. And I curl really just the inside because my outside lashes are already curly. And then I'm going to add now another thing you can change up is don't add mascara to the bottom. There's no rule that it has to be top and bottom. So if you wanted to change it up, I know one makeup artist that, um, yes, always share your reviews. We love, I love reading those reviews. Thank you for reminding me about that, Luminous. We love, yeah, guys, if there's a product that you love and you're using, write a review about it. We love hearing that. And plus, I love seeing y'all's names pop up. <laughs> but if you wanted to, there's a makeup artist um, that I've worked with before that she hates mascara on the bottom. Like she does not like that, that look. Now, I personally love mascara on the, on the bottom, but I'm always telling you guys to change it up. 
So there you go. We can do it just on the top if we want to. And then because we are getting into fall, I'm using a vinyl slick, but I am using deeper colors. Now that we're in the fall, I did kind of a neutral eye. And so I can Ooh. Oh my gosh, I love that, Cindy. Cindy is rocking it. I have to rub that together, but look at that. I know it's all over my teeth. Hey, Jacqueline, how are you? Get it off my teeth. And there you go. We always talk about how a pop of color on the lips can also dress up a look. If you're not feeling the best, if your allergies are bad, if you're just... Uh, if you're tired like I am from uh, from a dad's birthday party, then I can put a pop of color on my lip and bam, there it is. Like it will take it up to the next level. Everything looks polished. I only use one eyeshadow color on my, well, actually I did use two, but you could, got, could get away with one. Um, everything else was airbrushed and then bam, there you go. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate that. Thanks for coming in and telling me that. So there you go, guys. Monday morning routine and done in minutes. So fast. So fast. It's hot salsa. Hot salsa in the vinyl slick liquid lipsticks. Debbie, I put the link in the um, in the description below. So you can click on that and they'll tell you it's hot, hot salsa. Hot salsa. Also, guys, remember... If you're new, check out the beginning of this video because I did go over the difference of traditional makeup and airbrush and how you should see that go on. Majority of the people put it on like traditional makeup when you first get it and it's not going to do what it needs to do. And so there are steps. If you need extra help, book a class with me. We have small group classes on Mondays and Wednesdays. So click that link below as well and check it out. All right, guys, Luminous, thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks for being here, and I will see you tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. All right, bye for now.